Greetings, I'm Sister Roberta Papara, a Dominican Sister of Cincinnati and member of the Order of Preachers. Welcome to this reflection for June 20th and the 12th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The reading from this Sunday's lectionary that I will use will be from the Gospel of Matthew. But before I go any further, I want to say to all the fathers, the grandfathers, I know there's great grandfathers out there, godfathers, any one of you who have mentored and cared for the youth, teachers and others, happy Father's Day. Let us take a moment of silence before we enter into the opening prayer. Let us pray. In this season we call ordinary, as summer begins, remind us, Creator God, that you call us to holiness. Help us to hear your word this day and always, so that we may grow as disciples of Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. On that day, as evening came on, Jesus said to the disciples, let us cross to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took Jesus with them in the boat, just as he was, and other boats were with him. A violent squall came up and waves were breaking over the boat, so much so that it was filling up. Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care we are perishing? He woke up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Quiet, be still. The wind ceased and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you terrified? Do you not yet have faith? They were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who is this whom even the wind and the sea obey? The Gospel of the Lord. In the scripture passage we just heard, it comes from the last section of chapter 4 of Mark's Gospel. Previously in this chapter, Jesus is teaching the crowd gathered along the shore. He's teaching them in the form of parables. As the disciples who are near him, actually already in the boat, ask him the meaning of the parables, Jesus opens up these stories in order to deepen their faith. Then comes our passage. Scholars point out that this account of calming the storm is a miracle story, much like those that follow in chapter 5, and think that maybe it should go there. I want to say it could be a both and, but I think it's closely tied to the parables because in that chapter 4, Jesus stops occasionally to teach the disciples. And this account we heard is another teachable moment. Teachable for them, for the early Christian community who heard these accounts, and of course, for us today. The setting begins on the west side of the Sea of Galilee, and the fact that Jesus is teaching from a boat should make sense. Those of you who love to live out on the water know that sounds carry further across water so that those on the shore would be able to hear Jesus' words with greater ease. As the day came to an end, Jesus requests that they set out for the eastern shore. I imagine perhaps to go to Peter's mother-in-law's house in Capernaum. And at that time, even though the Sea of Galilee seemed calm, 
It is actually not a sea, nor even a huge lake. It's a modest lake. So crossing it should be a breeze, no pun intended. Because of an opportunity I had to study uh, scripture in Israel, I had a chance one day to kayak in the Sea of Galilee. The, the water was very calm. It was a beautiful afternoon. But as time wore on, it became turbulent. My kayak partner and I, we worked hard to return to the shore, even though we were not far out. So it isn't a leap to imagine the seemingly manageable lake could become treacherous, especially as night was falling across the area. Mark's account tells us that Jesus was soundly asleep and the disciples became so frantic they awakened him. Rebuking the storm, Jesus seems to also rebuke the fear the disciples were experiencing. For their part, they came away wondering just who is this man in their midst. As I said earlier, even though this is a miracle account that could be connected to chapter 5, it is an account that involves only Jesus' followers and their experience of the storm and their fear. It is, as I said, another teaching moment. So I ask this question. Who is really asleep in this account? Now, literally, we would say it is Jesus. It tells us that in the reading. But as a faith question, I would consider it is the disciples who are asleep, who are unable to understand the significance of Jesus' teaching that he gives to them alone. In Mark's gospel, they are slow learners. Perhaps the early Christians hearing this account were also slow earners. And then there is us today. Am I, are we, asleep to God's nudgings? The responsorial psalm for this Sunday, Psalm 107, speaks of the storm being the people, not God or Jesus. Listen to these, uh, these verses. They cry out to the Lord in their distress. From their straits he rescued them. He hushed the storm to a gentle breeze, and the billows of the sea were still. They rejoiced, rejoiced that they were calmed, and he brought them to their desired haven. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his kindness, his wondrous deeds to the children. And as a community, when we pray this at Mass over that weekend, we will say in response, give thanks to the Lord. God's love is everlasting. Step by step, we are moving into another world of this pandemic time. I re resist using the term post-pandemic, even if much seems to be moving towards whatever many of us may think is the normal or new normal, as we may consider it. There is still much to ponder what this time has been and will be for each of us. Late May, I received word of a beloved Dominican priest and friend who has ministered to the poorest of the poor in Brazil for decades. He died after a month-long struggle with COVID-19. Dominicans in the U.S. and around the world have lost their lives to this virus. We have friends and family who have lost their lives far too soon. We have collectively learned the toll this disease takes disproportionately among people of color, revealing just how omnipresent racism still is. As I move through this time, I ask Jesus to wake me up in this storm of anxiety. I invite you to join me in this prayer as well. On the church calendar, we call this time ordinary. But we have been living through and still are in an extraordinary time. Let us remember in a time of fear and ongoing anxiety that our growing understanding of evils like racism, 
we need to turn to Jesus and ask him to wake us up. And then we can, in response, using the response from our today's psalm, pray, give thanks to the Lord. God's love is everlasting.